Uh, right now we're going to be talking about how to build a style guide for ourselves. Uh, a style guide is essentially your manual for how you want everything to look. So the way that I've talked about how consistency in how your visuals look, your text, your color choice, the way that you can keep that consistent throughout your entire infographic is to have what is referred to in the biz as a style guide. So this is going to keep a hold of all of the information that you use to make your decisions uh, without necessarily having to just write it down on a scrap of notebook paper. You might notice that I have already gone ahead and finished my wireframe. So if you are, uh, if you are following along with me, go ahead and take a break to finish yours up and then come back to this. So let's go ahead and make our style guide. Uh, I am going to insert a new slide within my document, within my infographic PowerPoint, so that I have this on hold at all times. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that I have this image, I have this one over here, that I have been uh, using the whole time as the logo for the Health Tech Jam. If you have any major important logos, this should go in your style guide first. So I'm gonna copy this image, I'm gonna bring it over, and I'm gonna scale it up to the top. I know that this is mandatory for me to include. So I am going to keep this here the whole time. This is gonna inform my fonts, this is gonna inform my color choices and everything. So let's go ahead and add in, let's go ahead and make the decisions on our color choices. So I'm gonna take some squares, Alrighty, I've got my square. I'm going to remove it so that it does not have an outline. And I am going to say more fill colors. Luckily, we've got this eyedropper right here. So I'm gonna go pick from here and it automatically gives me this really deep navy blue color. And now I have that already selected. Yay, it matches. Actually, I don't know if it matches perfectly. I might lighten it a little, eh, it does, it does mostly. But let's think about what we know about this that we know with our color scheme. This is very dark, it's in the blue family, and it's pretty low saturation. It's not like it's like super bright. Um, it's not like super, super colorful. So I am going to make a note of this here. Blue hue, dark tone, low saturation. So remember what we talked about before, you can have differences in hue, differences in tone, and differences in saturation, but you don't wanna have more than two of those in your infographic. That makes for a crazy, messy, uh, overall visual, uh, visual cue. So let's pick our next one. Again, we know from here that uh, that green color needs to be included so I'm gonna go to, ah, excuse me. Where did it go? Shape format. And I'm gonna go down to more fill colors. I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool. I'm gonna grab this green color. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm going to make the same text box underneath my green. And I'm gonna say, well, it's like a, it's like a green yellow. So I'm going to say yellow, green, hue, light tone, high saturation. Now keep in mind, these are both pretty cool colors, right? We already have difference in tone. We already have difference in saturation. So given all of that, we need our last hue or any, any hues in between this to be something within that blue-green family. So I'm going to take my last color and let's see what looks good. We want it to be something in that family and otherwise it can be something in the middle. So what's, what's in between blue and green? I don't like that in particular. I'm just not, just not a huge fan. Um, so what I could do is go more of a neutral. 
sort of a blue gray. I don't mind that. I kind of like that. That's not so bad. Uh, so what would this be? Let's move our text over. I'm going to say, because um, it is kind of a greenish hue. Light tint. Spelled tint wrong. And low saturation again. Then let's do a let's do a couple of more colors just to see what we can come up with. Hmm. I'm just gonna kind of move through, move around here. Let's say we're in this position where I just can't seem to find something I love, you know? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to a site called Adobe Color. And this is a automatic color wheel program. So what you can do is you can move around these little things to be exactly what you need them to be. Let's say we know I need my, uh, my green issue. You can also change exactly all of your uh, your color themes. So we've seen analogous, we've seen monochromatic, triad, and complementary. Some of these others are uh, just different forms of uh, color schemes that we didn't necessarily need to go over. It looks like triad is going to be the closest we want to get. So if I'm taking this one, I'm making it that uh, that greenish color that I need. We've got our dark blue over here, our really dark blue, but as I move it over, it's sort of moving, um, it's moving that as well. So let's see if analogous is more our speed. I think it might be. So we've got sort of this, uh, this greenish yellow here. I'm gonna move this a little bit down. It's a little bit darker, I think. We've got our blue as we move this down. So this is just sort of me futzing with, uh, with all of this stuff now. So essentially you're gonna use programs like this to build up your color scheme. Once you've built up your color scheme, you are going to do the next move of the style guide, which is to look for images that accompany your infographic really well. Uh, what I usually recommend is a site called Flat Icon. Uh, Flight Ac Flat Icon has a ton of uh, licensable images that are really nice to use for infographics. Remember that photos have a lot of salience. Those realistic images have a lot of salience to them. So people are more naturally drawn to them. Because of that, if you have a lot of text and you have a lot of photographs, that's a huge, uh, that's a huge amount of information to throw at your viewers all, all at once. That's why some of the best uh, infographics are more symbol based or more icon based. And Flat Icons has a really, really nice bank of images. However, something to keep in mind is that they are, they do require you to license them. But if you are citing references anyway, this is exactly where you would put that information. So I went through already and uh, I searched health and there are a bunch of different packs you can go to. You can click on individual things. If it has a little S right here, that means it is good to go. It is free for you to use. You can hit the plus button right here and it's gonna add to your collections. If you don't see a collections thing, you're gonna hit these squares up here and you'll see your collections. Now I don't necessarily want a soap dispenser, but that's okay. You can always delete it from your collection if you want to. Once you are ready to go and ready to download your stuff, you can either download everything all at once 
Or if you know your color scheme already, if you know what color you want your icons to be, you're gonna hit the I button. And it's gonna take you to that individual icon. Right here, it gives us a list of potential file formats and we're gonna stick with PNG. PNG basically just means that the, uh, the file has the ability to have a transparent background. And these flat icons do have transparent backgrounds. I know that I am going to want my icons to be white. So I'm gonna select the white button. That way I can uh, throw them on top of any of my colors and it'll be fine. And then I'm gonna hit 256 for its pixels because it's a big icon, but it's not that big. It gives you your download options and we're going with the free download. It just means that we have to credit the author and in here we see Smartline. Smartline is the, offer, is the author in this case. So you're gonna download it, it's gonna download, and you're going to throw it into a folder of images that you have. So I've already gone ahead and done this. Uh, I've collected a bunch of different icons that I like that I think I might wanna use in my final graphic. And notice that I've downloaded them as white for the most part, and they show up white with a transparent background, which is really, really nice. All of mine were downloaded from the same author, which is, uh, I believe, free picks, but I'm not sure. Uh, I wrote it down, though, right at the bottom of here. References or sources. So icons made by free pick from flaticon.com. This is how you're going to cite those, uh, or this is how you're going to credit the creators of those icons if you're using them. So once you have all of your icons in there, a good idea is to go ahead and throw on a big flat square. I'm gonna make mine that dark color. And what I want you to do is insert and then go to pictures, go to fo uh, picture from file, and you're gonna bring in all of the images that you have collected. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to include all of them in your final infographic, but go ahead and bring all of them into here and organize them on your page. This is gonna give your style guide a bank of images for you to use. So now you're not gonna have to worry about uh, looking at all your stuff again and thinking, um, oh, you know, what am I gonna use for this thing? You can just come back to this style guide and see what's most appropriate for each of your sections. Remember that not everything necessarily needs an icon, but it's nice to have the icons that are applicable for you in one consistent place. Uh, one thing you might notice is that these don't really mesh in terms of color, so I might not use these in the end. But uh, this is the general start of our style guide. And then the last thing that you're going to want to do with your style guide is you're going to want to create a text guide. So towards the bottom, I'm going to bring some text boxes. And the only thing I'm going to type in here is header. I'm going to have one that says subheader. Eh. And then I'm gonna have one that says body text. So just like regular paragraph text. Body text is typically, it needs to be very, very clear, very, very easy to read. I usually love uh, Avenir. And I'm gonna select medium. Very light fonts can be very pretty, but they're very difficult to read if they are small or if they're in one big paragraph place. Subheader, I want it to be bigger than my body text, of course. Um, I'm going to bring this up to maybe a 28. And I really like Avenir. I've always really liked it. So I'm gonna say bold. Um, and for my header, it's gonna be something big. 
I personally love having like really fun, flashy headers. So I uh, am going to pick this one called Bungie. I think it's super cool and super fun, uh, especially considering the fact that the entire thing is very techy, very futuristic. I think this kind of relates back to that tone. This brings us back to the idea of making sure that the visuals that you're using uh, match everything really well. One last thing to look back at is the text that's used in the logo. We've got this tall sans serif. We've got these kind of blocky colors in here. Uh, notice that this is all caps. So for my subheader, I'm going to write this in all caps. And now we have a much more consistent look and feel. So this is our uh, style guide. And this is what we're gonna be using the entire time to fill in the contents of our wireframe.